let's just get straight into the fucking pièce de résistance, bro. Let's get straight into the pièce de résistance. Let's not even run around wasting time. Let's get straight into the pièce de fucking résistance. Allegedly, Brendan Shaw has announced he's quitting stand-up comedy. Yes, you guessed it. Brendan has announced he's quitting stand-up comedy. Wow, wow. Now, he didn't really say that. He didn't really say that. What he actually said is that he's going to quit touring as much as he was before because he doesn't, you know, he's not selling as many tickets, not many clubs are booking him, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't actually say he's quitting stand-up. So there's a lot of mis, you know, misinformation out there, a lot of fake news. Obviously, you man, you man and you gal them come to me for the real news, right? You come to me for the real news. You come to me for the realness, right? This is AZCNN, whatever, right? This is AZN or whatever, right? Or AZNN, Agassino Zinger News Network. So you come to me for the facts and the real news. So he never said he's quitting stand up. He said he's quitting touring. That's what he said. He's quitting touring. But some people are taking it as far as saying that if he's saying he's quitting touring, Mosaki is saying he's quitting stand up, but he didn't actually say that. Get it? Cool. We're going to watch the clip. My everything, comments, tech, everything about support for you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So much love. Yeah, tons, tons. So I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I had to cancel Austin and Nashville. Uh, and usually I hate doing that stuff. Um, it happens. But, uh, yeah, I th- I think this time I just don't care. That's where I'm at. I I got I got to be home more. I'm gonna pull back from touring so much, and I just got to be home, man. I got to. I can't miss Tigers games. Can't miss my <laughs> bossy growing up, uh, baby girl. Uh, just I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm freaking tired. Yeah, you know, I've been hustling for over twelve years now. Not that I'm gonna stop doing the pods, but. As far as the the playing life and stuff like that, I gotta I gotta chill out. I can do spots in L.A. I can do local, SoCal, NorCal, but going international or you know going across the the freaking United States ain't happening right now. So I'm gonna take a break from that and just focus on family and uh, do my thing, man. Do my thing. So yeah, let's get into it. Enough of that. Enough of that. Let's start off with the positives. On paper. This is actually the smartest decision he's ever made. The smartest call, the most astute decision he's ever made in his career was to quit on his own terms. Because I feel like in life, um, you know, I think I've mentioned it before in this stream and other streams, one of my biggest fears of being a consummate party boy was having the party cancel me was having the party tell me it's enough. I always wanted to be the person that hung up my party hat, but didn't have the party tell me it's over because that hurts in another type of way. So when you're able to call your own shots and say, hey, I've had enough, it's okay. I also think in general in society, we kind of demonize or look down upon people who quit, but I feel like there's a lot of honor. There's a lot of like respect. There's a lot of like um, grace. There's a lot of um, humility when you decide to quit something i don't think you always i think maybe it's a consequence of the hustle culture we have now where everybody wants to be i don't know killing it and beast and doing all this sort of nonsense but sometimes you can do something to a good level but sometimes it could just not be the thing for you long term and it's okay to say hey i want to quit doing this and do something else when you quit one thing it doesn't mean you quit life it just means you quit that particular thing so no problem with there whatsoever especially given the evidence that we've seen Kurt of the fire and the kids celebrate people so big up them for keeping an eye on that sort of stuff but they're the ones that have been keeping an eye on these ticket sales and whatever it may be and for the longest time maybe for the last 18 months more so you've seen a real steep decline in brenda's ability to sell tickets so the evidence was there proof in black and white that he's not as big as a draw as he was in the past we don't know what the reasons are we can have we can speculate later on but in terms of the data, it's fairly evident that he's just not selling enough tickets. And probably at this stage of his career, he's probably spending way more money going to these gigs, you know, putting his brother up in a hotel, his self in a hotel, flights there, food there, than he is actually making when he's going to perform. So it doesn't make any economical sense. And most likely at this stage of his career, with well, the amount of podcasts he's got, he's probably making way more money on pods than he is doing stand-up. And that was never the case 
If you remember early episodes of the podcast, he would always brag about how much money they were making on the road, doing stand-up, doing weekends, whatever. Right? They, they'd make quite a bit of money doing that because of the early podcast fame and you know the unknown nature of his comedy level in general. That's obviously gone now and it's changed. So congrats, you know, that's a good thing, I guess. Then obviously the focus on the family. Even though I think it comes from a weird place and it isn't the most sincere and is a little bit manipulative and it's almost using your family as a human shield, the fact that he's still got to this place is a good thing. The fact that he's now decided, hey, I'm a family man, I'm putting my family first and all that malarkey is a good thing. I've always been, been confused on the stream about why, yeah, big up Stinger, Goo, appreciate you. Long live the gringo poppy. <laughs> we're gonna watch it again actually next stream we're gonna watch it again in four if you keep if you guys keep playing games and keep disrespecting brendan schaub's stand-up career i'm gonna play gringo pappy in four from the start to the end and we're gonna be pausing that bitch all the way laughing and analyzing the jokes so if you disrespect brendan schaub's stand-up special one more time stinger goo you you included i'm gonna play that bad boy from the beginning to the end we're gonna have a celebration stream <laughs> we're all gonna get punished i'm gonna get punished you're gonna get punished the fucking everybody's gonna get punished okay don't disrespect the gringo pappy gringo pappy available now on youtube make sure you check it out anyway i think it's a great thing that he's got to this point now where he's focusing more on his family no matter how it happened i think it's a good thing even though i don't think it's the most sincere thing in the world it's a great thing that's happening right now i love it it's good um and then lastly i must say because the reviews have been so bad for his stand-up comedy and because it doesn't look like he's the most inquisitive, curious, creative guy in the world when it comes to his writing and stand-up, it's probably for the best that he hangs it up for now. Because he was never going to get any better with time. This idea that he had to get to the magical 10-year mark before things turned was really a misnomer for me. Because I feel like you have to be at least good or know what you're doing bad. Well, know what you're doing badly in order to improve, right? That's how you kind of have to be. Maybe you're not going to be great. But if you kind of know why you're shit, it can kind of help you get better. But the fact that he never actually could understand why he was terrible or he never even agreed that his specials were bad he thought they were awesome there's that story according to bgl again big up bgl <clears throat> may your spirit fucking remain true there was a story that bgl told on the fire and the kid that allegedly brendan thought the gringo pappy would be his ticket to doing theaters do you remember that brendan actually thought the gringo pappy would be his his ticket to do theaters that would be the special people would see and be like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. Let's book him for a theatre tour. Let's book him internationally. He actually thought that. And you have to also remember, the Gringo Pappy was an hour long. The Gringo Pappy was an hour long and it was edited down to 30 minutes. So that's the best 30 from that hour. So can you imagine what the hour was, the rest of the hour was like? So it's probably a good thing that he's decided to quit because stand-up i don't think was ever for him unfortunately in the conventional sense standing in front of a mic a stage in front of a microphone telling jokes it's never going to be for him so the fact that he's given up and quit it i think is a good thing negatives now let's move on to our negatives and let's do a little bit of trashing <sighs> we have to blame joe rogan for this isn't it partly in one way, I think if you're Rogan and you have the power and influence and the platform that he has, I think every friend should do what Rogan has done for his friends. Give your friends a platform to showcase their talents, to talk, you know, to spread their message, to touch millions of people and to change their lives. Because I think personally for me, this is my own opinion and own interpretation. Don't kill me for this. But I feel like Rogan would much rather have people come on these podcast get loads of subscribers and listeners big up ricky pitcher appreciate you brother shouts out to his family <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh yeah big up shout out to his family if you know if you know that meme you know the meme shout out to his family that's very appropriate shout out to his family honestly you guys are cold he's his daughter just got back from hospital man you guys need to chill because you guys were, and by the way, you guys were giving it to me in the comments. So appreciate everyone for being honest with me in the comments regarding me 
re- reacting to Brendan Shaw's post when he was crying or whatever about his kid. You guys are giving it to me. I've got some some pretty scathing <laughs> comments in there. People were <laughs> attacking me. You're, you're attacking me. It's like, okay, fair play, fair play, fair play. Uh, you know, not the most tasteful video in the world for me, but you know, it is what it is. We move. So, I think personally, Rogan would much rather have people on his pod as guests and help them boost their podcast than he would to lend them money. I think the money thing, I think you guys are evident. I think you guys also know. When you when you lend your friends money, it kind of changes the relationship forever. It's hard to go back on it. There's a quote going around of Gail King, bit of a donut, don't get me wrong. She's not the most smartest cookie out there. But she made a comment about how she was dating this one guy and he asked her to lend her money to pay for his child support. And she said, you know, I lent him the money. He paid it back on time. But she could never look him the same way. And it's like, yeah, of course. Obviously, she's dating this guy, so it's a completely different dynamic. But lending money to people is always a bit awkward. So I think when you're Rogan and you're as rich as he is, there's always people asking you for money. But I feel like Rogan would much rather give people an opportunity and have them on his pod, let, let them get quote-unquote famous so they can make their own money as opposed to lend them money. So if you're Rogan, it's great to have all your friends on your pod, boost them, whatever. The issue is... For every, I don't know, for every Andrew Schultz, there's a Brendan Schaub. Or maybe there's more Brendan Schaubs than Andrew Schultz's. Where Andrew Schultz, you know, like him or not, about it, like his comedy or not, or his personality or his, or his podcast, put that to one side. Andrew clearly had a plan in mind when he wormed his way into Rogan Circle. He knew what he was doing. I still maintain, I don't care what you guys say. I know he's annoying. I know he can get up, get on your, under your skin. But Andrew Schultz's original first performance or first appearance actually on the JRE was maybe the best debut of any comedian. He came there on fire. He really wanted to impress. He wanted to be funny. He kind of showcased all of his kind of attributes and skills and shit. And that basically launched his career. You know, obviously Charlemagne helped and shit, but that Rogan Association definitely helped. Brendan, on the other hand, he took everything from Rogan's platform only took from that relationship and didn't do any work internally or on his own career professionally to really get to the next level he took it all for granted that's the crazy thing about brendan he took it all for granted he took the the brett rogan friendship and the platform and introduction and the signal boost for granted and he never made any effort to improve as a podcaster as a host as a stand-up comedian as a content creator he did nothing 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 and i think that was his biggest crime that's his biggest crime he didn't take advantage of the fucking golden ticket the Willy Wonka golden ticket he was given by Rogan, he never took advantage of it. So that's probably something that's not going to sit right with him. That's why he has to quit stand-up comedy because he never took advantage of it. Because I don't think it's a bad thing to be Rogan and give this guy a chance because he's your friend. But I also think when you're Rogan and you complain about Hollywood and you complain about the gatekeepers, but then you also platform Brendan Shaw, who's maybe one of the least deserving people of that kind of level of success ever it kind of makes you look a bit wild you know you can't really complain about gatekeepers and you know um all this malarkey when really you platform some of the most terrible least comedic least funny less entertaining hot people ever it doesn't make any sense in that regard another side of it also papa had to let it get to this point for him to quit he had to let it get to this point to quit. He had to go fucking hell to the lever, the career absolutely on its last legs for him to quit. And still, he didn't even quit with grace. He still had to kind of use his family as a human shield, his kids as a human shield, his daughter, baby daughter that just came off a fucking, I don't know, life support or whatever, you know, operating table out there in the hospital. He couldn't even say, hey, I tried the fucking stand-up comedy thing. It wasn't for me. Hasn't necessarily panned out the way I hoped it would. Maybe be a bit self-deprecating. As you can tell by the IMDB scores, people aren't really too fond of what I'm doing out there. But whatever. Nah. 
he had to let it get to this point for it to quit. And I don't think he needed to. I think there's a situation and there's a scenario where Brendan could actually make stand-up comedy work. And how do you make it work? Just doing it via TFATK. I never understood why he actually tried to pursue a career as a legit stand-up comic anyway. He could have easily done a situation where he does live shows under the TFATK banner where he does little improv sessions like he used to do before or little kind of spoken word kind of manifesto type things, whatever. It's not spoken word, but he, he did like kind of, you know, bits where he kind of said a, a, a bit or whatever in the segment of a show and then have Callan do a performance or somebody else do something and that's it. But obviously stand-up comedians, by default, I think are kind of greedy, it looks like. They don't really do shows together, you know? That's why Bert maybe is a bit of a unique guy in terms of bringing everyone together to do those crew shows and those other shows he does live and stuff. But stand-up comedians don't like to like share money, it seems like. So Brian and Brendan would prefer to go and do their own gigs performing to 20 people than they would do, than they would prefer to come together and have maybe 50 people come to their shows. You know, it's a bit bizarre, but I feel like if Brendan did more TFAK shows, he would be okay. But him trying to be a legit stand-up comic, having no real comedic chops, having no real comedic timing, never really being a funny dude, and trying to develop that funny bone in your 30s, it was just never going to happen. Never. And even if it did, was if it was going to happen, he would have to be very self... What's the thing? He'd have to be very observant. He'd have to be very um, introspective. He'd have to be very, you know, thick-skinned also to be able to understand what was going wrong, accept the licks and be able to make some edits along the way. But he was never able to do that. So it was never, ever, ever going to work. So this is kind of an inevitability. And if anything, like I said before, it's just a bit weird and a little bit yucky that he's kind of using his family as an excuse, you know? Because the real rap truth is that if he was selling tickets, like, this is the really sad thing about the situation. And let's be honest here. Let's be honest because the kids are okay now. Let's be honest. If he was selling tickets and he was on tour and he was doing countrywide tours, international tours, do you really think he would have quit or you would have cancelled those tours to go and look after his kid in the hospital? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Of course not. And because he's not selling many tickets to the comedy, whatever, he's doing whatever, you know, Laugh Factory or whatever he's performing at in LA and shit, he's not selling tickets. That's the reason why he's quitting. That's the honestly the sad thing about the situation. I don't think it's a bad thing to quit, but he's obviously only quitting because the numbers just don't make any sense. He's probably spending more money on his outfits than he's ever going to make back doing stand-up comedy. So why would he do it? but then he's using his kids as an excuse of being a family man. It's like, come on, bro. If you if you were selling where you were selling, you know, in like 2016, 2017, do you really think he would quit? He's, do you think he'd cancel a show? Do you think he'd take a week off podcasting? Come on, bro. Come on. Let's be real. Let's be real. So that's the only sad thing in this situation is that, even at this moment in time, when things are really down bad for him, he still can't be honest. He still can't be straight up and say, hey, man, it just wasn't for me. I'll give it my best go. I'm going to pivot and do other things. Um, I still might come back and do some shows here and there throughout the year. And maybe even if you want to spin it, you could even spin it in a positive way for yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to approach stand up in a different way. Maybe doing gigs the way everyone else does it isn't for me. It doesn't suit my type of comedy. Um, my audience has seen all my material already. I'm, I'm at like a bit of a, you know, I'm having a bit of a writer's block and stuff. I don't really know what to write about because I'm having all these troubles outside of comedy and stuff and, you know, things I'm worrying about. You can spin it in a good way and actually be a little bit self-deprecating, be honest, kind of wear your heart on your sleeve. But even then, at this vulnerable moment, he still feels a need to like, protect his ego and be like you know what i'm only quitting to be a family man and it's like bro you're not completing to be a family man let's let's be real you're, you're quitting because your ticket sales aren't great if your ticket sales were great you wouldn't be with that family we know what you're like when your ticket sales are good 
We remember what it was like when, you know, unfortunately his wife had a miscarriage and, you know, he was out on tour somewhere. He was out in a hot tub with his boys and she was out crying on social media about, you know, having a miscarriage and how hurtful that was. We know what he's like when he's got tickets. We know what all these guys are like. All these guys are like. We know what they're like. So this whole lie that he's now a trans a reformed family man guy is horrible. Even though it's a even though in general it's a good thing because it still meant he's gotten to the place where he is going to be a quote-unquote family man by force because he's got no shows but let's be real let's be real let's be real the guy's only doing this because there's no other options really and truly but that's my point of view i don't know what you guys think let me let me know what you guys think in the stream chat what do you guys think of brendan's um announcement that he's quitting do you think it's sincere um is there an ulterior motive um do you think this will change if his ticket sales suddenly pick up and stuff? What do you guys think in the stream chat? Let me know what you guys think. Um, I wear my organs on my sleeve, not just on my heart. Andrew Tane. Chin will pivot his content into van life. Pepper has made me laugh more than any other comedian, so I hope he don't quit. Can't move tickets. Rolly, bust down. Actually, I want to know this. How soon do you think podcasting will quit? He'll quit podcasting. Because he doesn't have as many sponsors as before. Podcast network shit is, isn't is doing as good, right? That podcast one thing, the share prices are down. How soon do you think podcasting will follow? <laughs> that would be brutal. Like, not that he will quit podcasting. Podcasting will quit on him because podcast is only beneficial because it pays. When the sponsors dry up, oof. Um, no BGL to write a new 25 exactly hold on Quite a, do you think BGL writ that 20 you think BGL had a hand in writing the Gunga Papi is that is that actually true <sighs> that's brutal if true if BGL writ that wow um, not young old vibes he quit comedy the same way Joe Budden quit rapping <sighs> boom bingo 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 young old vibes exactly the thing about budden though which is fucking funny he he obviously only quit rap because because you know no one gave a fuck about his rapping but then when he made it in stand-up when he made it in fucking podcasting he almost felt as if like podcasting was a vindication for his failed rap career and he started to feel like He's he was des now he was the star he was always meant to be type of thing. He let that fame get to his head. So he's Button is an interesting character in that regard. Like that's the thing that made you know the original cast want to leave because he never acted or never believed that the podcast success was in part because of the whole cast of people. He always thought that it was he was a special one. Same like rapping, you know, solo kind of artist. But really, it was other people involved as well. So yeah, that's a really great point. Remember that beer commercial he drew in the journal because he never writes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure, he'll downsize. There's no way he can continue to finance the studio. Oh my God, Mike Johnson, the studio, the studio. Yo, that's one thing I agree with Rogan um, and uh, fucking Bobby Lee. Rogan and Bobby Lee were talking and they were like, oh, um, kind of confused as to why like Tom Segura and Burt have these expansive studios with like hundreds of people working in there right and even they said even Burt's studio I think he's got a studio in his house right he's got a studio in his in his house and shit and they were saying that Burt's studio in his house even has people working behind laptops and stuff you know on social media and stuff and they're like they don't understand why and it's something that I've always kind of respected about Joe in that he keeps his studio his podcast set up very lo-fi Obviously, it's great equipment, great audio, great lighting. Studio is really good too, right? In terms of layout and stuff, easy to kind of, you know, whatever. But in terms of the operational side of things, it's very basic. There's a guy that does the booking. There's a Navy SEALs at the front of the door to make sure no stragglers come in. And there's Jamie behind the mixing board and switching the cameras. That's it. Nothing else is involved there. I think there's another guy that maybe does bookings as well. I think I mentioned it before, right? But that's it. Nothing else. Whereas those other guys have crazy amount of employees, like actual full-time employees, just working behind the fucking boards and stuff, um, claiming a salary, which, you know, you'd imagine on top of your cost of renting those spaces, 
it's going to be crazy to kind of run those things. So essentially you're having to balance so many plates just to keep the lights on, which obviously makes those situations hard to kind of keep going because, you know, the operational costs are so high, um, which again, I've never understood. But I think a lot of those guys want to appear like they're successful. So I think in Brendan's vision, I remember there was a, this again is crazy law. But do you guys remember when Rogan moved into that studio before he left LA? That really nice one. It was like a big one in a massive, like, you know, warehouse unit. I think it was maybe the same sort of thing he's got in Austin. But it was the studio before he moved to LA. Do you remember when Brendan went to visit the studio? He was talking about that studio ad nauseum for maybe a two weeks straight. I think he fell in love with that studio ever since then. He wanted to appear like a big dog as well and kind of emulate his hero or his hero or his dad in Rogan. And he went out and got a studio himself just to kind of, you know, act like he was Rogan's level too. I think he's, again, this is the same thing I think I've had an issue with Brendan because I feel like in general, his lifestyle has never really made sense to me. Like, why are you like a average middle of the road comedian and stand up comic not comedian and podcaster but then you have cars and a house of like i don't know some former quarterback or something like it doesn't make any sense and of course most of it is an image thing he wants to appear like a big dog like a big wig without having any of the accomplishments of a big dog or a big wig so the studio is one of those things i want to appear like a big dog i want to have that kind of hero pose that hero camera angle of me walking from the back and stuff into my studio looking at all the different rooms pointing at walls and shit like i'm doing work right and like when really and truly like the thick boy if you think about it could be done from a big from a pretty decent size one room of a podcast he can do that whole entire thick boy shit in one room they they basically built firing a kid all from one studio room so suddenly now that you know this does fit boy all of a sudden he needs all these different podcast spaces where really you know all the shows on there have him on there there's no other podcast that's under thick boy that doesn't have him involved in it in some way so is it really a network i don't really know but you could do that whole entire show from one space and cut the cost down drastically but you know what can you do he'd rather buy more cars fire george but they're not not fucking you know uh cut down on the expenses and shit because he wants to appear like a big dog so it is what it is um micho 37 says i don't like brendan but i hope people will let it off will let off will let off him a bit just for now he's a narcissist egomaniac and deserves a downfall but having a miscarriage and having a kid in critical condition is rough yeah that's true i but that's the thing i think most people don't wish ill on him in that regard and if anything, most of the haters were the ones that turned around and said, hey, we wish you well, he, your kid is in our prayers. Because everyone is uh, you know, willing to kind of draw a line in the sand when it comes to that sort of stuff concerning kids and family and shit. So if anything, the internet kind of proved Brendan wrong. It's not all bad because the people that hate you the most are the ones that actually were the ones that went out their way to send you well wishes. Even the fact, I mean, I've mentioned it in the, in the Patreon video, even the fact the kids subbed it, look what they did. They saw the thread about Brendan announcing his baby is going to go for emergency surgery was going bad and people were starting to make all these crazy conspiracy theories about he was faking the whole thing because of his low ticket sales and they closed it they closed the thread they let the thread up but they closed it to comments that's actually quite admirable considering how sometimes you know racy and dicey that subreddit can get with Brendan the fact that they closed it showed that they were like understanding of how the tone was going and they wanted to be respectful and they just shut it off and let people kind of you know upvote and whatever and talk in other places but they didn't want to make that post go a bit nutty and stuff and that's obviously acknowledging that hey he might be a piece of shit sometimes but you know when it comes to kids let's have some grace so I don't think I ever think that's been an issue the main issue with him using his family as an excuse is that it feels like an excuse it feels like a, a it feels like a, a human meat shield essentially instead of owning up to the issues of like hey my career is not going the way it should be going I'm gonna take some time to work whatever whatever you want to say if you don't want any comments on it cool but just using your family as an excuse sometimes can feel a bit messy it's, even if it's real it can feel a little bit nasty you know but i think most people don't really wish ill on him i don't think so honestly i, d I don't really think people out there 
want this guy to like be out on the streets begging for money i don't think so maybe i'm maybe i'm mistaken but i think most people are just generally aggrieved that his personality just think he says some horrible stuff he acts in a bad way sometimes and maybe it's a constant oh he's a great guy and maybe it's all the other issue as well to say this right is this i honestly do think a lot of the hate towards brendan is more to do with the other comedians and the people in the scene not willing to want to say the, the the obvious thing like everybody pretending like they don't know why people don't like him like you know what i mean that kind of collective fucking um ignorance purposeful pur purposeful ignorance or willful blindness to the obvious might have actually made people get more annoyed like what the fuck like it's obvious why he's a fucking piece of shit why aren't you saying it and people then start go out of their way to want to prove it and then you find other people who actually want to prove it and then you serve the community and then blah here we go maybe that's part of it who knows but i just think fundamentally if the guy would actually work on his own personality work on how he comes across all of the problems will go away but again narcissist can you actually have any of that self kind of self-reflection it remains to be seen and so far doesn't happen um james he didn't put in the work he half asses everything expects results he's never done anything to improve do you really think he spent second writing the material exactly and that's that's why it's hard to have that's why i think you can't really blame rogan too much because i feel like if you're if you're rogan and you have friends i think like one of the greatest things you can do and i think most of you would agree here you've all had periods in your life or maybe a point in your life where you've met somebody that was rich maybe you had like a rich friend when you were growing up as a kid maybe you met someone rich that when you were like an adult and stuff it's always amazing when you but when you meet someone rich and they're just really giving like they go out of their way to just i remember once we had this rich kid that we grew up with who just went out of his way to always just pay for everything when we went out like he'd cover the bill with food and drinks like he didn't even make a fuss about it and if anything it was more so like, oh, I just want us to have a good time. I don't want anybody to not come out because I don't have money. So he'd much rather you just come out and just cover the bill. And that's what always, like, I was like, fuck. He was like, yeah, that's what you meant to do when you grow up and you're privileged and your parents are fucking millionaires. Like, why wouldn't you do that? But I feel like, so you can't blame Rogan for being the most famous podcast or person, media and person in the world and using his platform to help his friends. It's just a problem when these friends don't work on themselves don't try and improve their content and just treat that blessing like nothing or take take it for granted that's a major brendan's problem the problem isn't rogan helping his friends the problem is brendan just not taking you know not using that kind of leg up that little advantage for what it's worth it's like the nepo baby argument right nepo babies do the same thing um a nepo baby gets given a advantage gets given opportunities that they probably don't deserve um easily and quickly and instead of working at it and developing themselves they don't they just do the bare minimum and expect all the all the results all the best results and it's like come on man come on come on come on um case of moses most comedians behave worse than baba he just happens to suck at comedy huh most comedians behave worse than baba he just sucks at comedy so maybe the com maybe the combination of it he sucks at comedy and he's also not the most well-behaved person even though that sounds weird to say about an adult he's not the most likable person that's probably the thing he sucks and he's not likable that's the problem um maybe who knows uh mike johnson brendan got so out of control with his ego bro he thought he was george carton yeah i said that as well in a in a, in a patreon mike i said in a patreon that's also one of brendan's biggest issues it's a strength though in one way it's a strength because i feel like you have to have a bit of delusion you have to be a little bit mentally unwell to do the stuff that i do even streaming or maybe making content at my low level to do stand-up and podcast all that sort of stuff you have to have a little bit of a sprinkling a little bit of a salt-based sprinkle of mental illness to actually believe that people give a fuck about what you say to actually think you're funny to actually try and do that on stage to have a podcast that you do on a weekly basis well, you have to be a little bit cuckoo you have to kind of believe in yourself to a point where people think you're a bit nuts but you also have to be a bit self-aware you have to be knowing you kind of fall in the totem pole of like you know 
on the scale of like artists and stuff. And for some reason, Papa just has never been able to clock onto that. And I think the issue, the the, the really alarm bell for me was when I remember watching um some clips of the Golden Hour and they don't do it anymore now. But you remember those clips I'll be playing into you guys on the stream where Brenda will be playing a clip of himself from a pod or something. Do you remember that? And he'd be laughing at himself. That's when I knew he was a bit fucked in the head. Because I've never gone out of my way to play a clip of myself on my stream, ever. Because I think it's embarrassing and cringe. I don't like to watch myself or hear myself. But Brendan would sit there and watch himself from a previous pod and laugh at the jokes and stuff that he said. That's when I knew, oh, he's fucked. There's no hope for him. Because he's not even funny on pods like that. So to be laughing at yourself hysterically <laughs> on a pod is like, whoa, you don't even know what funny is. You are in trouble. You know, so it was never going to work. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, he's fucked, man. Because he must watch Gringo Pappy and he must be crying with laughter. Like literally rib splitting. When we're watching it, we're like, where's the jokes? <laughs> are the jokes here? We don't know, but yeah, big up him. How come he quit working on comedy like he did in 2017, 2019? At least then he was doing four spots a week. Ryan Joseph, he needs Cat Williams to take him under his wing. Rogan gave him plenty of chances. He squandered it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, that Rogan, that Rogan ticket was just, that was, to be fair anyway, to be fair to him anyway, to be fair to him. I also don't think he actually wanted to be a stand-up comedian. That's my personal opinion. I just think he was looking for a way out of the UFC because he hated it. He hated being a UFC fighter. He hated it. Hated it. Hated Dana. Hated the business, especially when they took away the fucking sponsors on the shorts and stuff. He hated the business of the UFC. He wanted any way out. And I don't blame the guy. But stand up comedy was a week. Stand up comedy probably was a good option because at the time it paid so well. Like, imagine he was getting all that podcast rub, the Rogan rub. People were coming out to see him perform. He was associated with Rogan, so clubs were falling over themselves to book him. Like, it must have been, he must have made so much money. Those early years of the podcast, those early years of Rogan friendship, he must have made so much money. And I think, in general, he always just wanted to have that lifestyle. He wanted to live in the Hidden Hills somewhere. He wanted to have a nice big mansion, cars, cool trainers, a wife with a BBL, some cute kids. That's all he wanted. Uh, I don't really think that, I think whatever got him there quicker was what he wanted, but I don't think he ever really deep down wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I know he lied and said, oh, my dad, I won't be funny. No, you want to be a football player. Let's be real. Um, and, you know, that didn't work out for him. But I don't think he actually went to be a stand-up comedian. It just happened to pay well. And it was an option that was viable and open at the time. So why not do it? You know what I mean? But I don't think he ever wanted to be one. So the idea of sitting down and writing jokes, like, what? Um, if he was quitting family for, if you even though I have kids, <laughs> um, I can't maybe put myself in the shoes of a parent and that kind of feeling of like, you know, helplessness when your kid is ill and has to go into emergency surgery especially when he's a baby like that must be horrendous especially because it's already born premature it's already having health complications and on top of it it's going in and out of hospital and then now you have to bring the baby back you know it's horrible i can't imagine but i can also think as a parent you must have conflicting feelings you're allowed to have them it's like having a kid that has special needs there must be a sense of relief sometimes when you're able to take them somewhere where someone's going to look after them. But you're also sad they don't have to spend time with them anymore, right? You're allowed to have those conflicting feelings as a parent. So maybe when he made that reaction video, I misread him looking bummed as him not caring and stuff and, oh, it's about his career when really he was probably worried about his daughter that went into emergency surgery and he was also really bummed that he couldn't go out on the road and perform i think you're allowed to feel those two feelings it's perfectly fine um i think I, again i just misread it because i'm again i don't have a family or anything so i don't know what that is like but because the one thing if that was me and i was i'd just be bummed you know whatever so i think that was the most thing so he couldn't really figure it out or kind of bring that to grasp so that makes a lot more sense in that regard so completely understand where he's coming from it's just a shame again that it had to happen at this point had to get to this stage even though again um i've never really been the biggest fan of his comedy 
and he's never really shown any willingness you know to improve or to work on it um he kind of some people would say he stole a living and he maybe didn't deserve the opportunities he was given but again i don't think you get anything that you deserve in life you take you, you you get what you take and sometimes you just get lucky and you bump into someone like a rogan you start a podcast and because again you have to imagine that the timing everything about their careers has been i think even a burt crash is a good example of it. i'll play a clip later of burt talking to bobby but i think some of these guys recognize the blessings they've been given and they're just trying to ride it until the wheels fall off and i think that's what you should do I think that's what you should fucking do. You should ride those opportunities until the fucking wheels fall off. You shouldn't just let up and coast and act like you're fucking Larry King and shit, right? Which kind of bad Brendan kind of, you know, was acting a little bit like, you know, took it for granted, just assumed he'd be rich and famous forever and ever. I think you should really be pushing it until the end because, you know, you never know when it's over. But they started at an opportune time. They started podcasting at a time when podcasting wasn't that popular. They started doing long full podcasting when that wasn't too popular. Um, Rogan's been one of the most famous people in media for two decades plus and shit. Like all those things were really important in terms of launching all of these comedians in the JRV verse and Bapper versus career. And it's kind of been the reason why they're still around now. And another thing that people don't really take to take for or don't put in consideration is just the familiarity of them all these guys have been around for so long that most people are just grandfathered into listening to them you don't even care what they have to say some i bet some of you guys listen to the fire and the kid jre burt cast um tom segura's podcast what you, um, your mom's house just out of necessity just out of habit because it's the thing that you listen to every whatever tuesday wednesday it drops just at the background you don't even care what they're saying you just listen to it and, but you don't listen to new pods. It's very rare that you find a new pod that you listen to. So I think a lot of these guys have fans and success built in because of that early period, right? And they don't really, rec they don't see it as that. They just think it's just, oh yeah, I'm really famous. Everyone loves me. It's like, mm. a lot of these people are just there from that time. You don't really have a lot of new fans. Um, and if anything, you know, you should take that for granted. But some of them do. Brendan being a good example. And again, think about it. What other comedian in that circle has had to quit comedy? The only one that has to quit it is Brendan because he's so he's been so lazy in his approach. Brian has had a fucking whole rape allegation against him. Brian doesn't even have his own podcast. Brian is not the best on fucking social media. Brian is old. Brian's comedy is probably just as bad as Brendan, but he hasn't had to quit stand up. You know? The only person's had to quit has been the one guy who's taken it for the granted the most. The one guy who's gone out of his way to self sabotage. He's the one person that's gone that's actually had to quit. You know? Now, Mr. West, he didn't actually quit. I'm gonna play the clip one more time. He didn't actually quit. He just announced he's not gonna go on tour as much as before. He's not gonna do a lot of countrywide tours, a lot of international tours, which only leaves touring LA and surrounding counties and surrounding states, which is, you know kind of like quitting but everybody saying he's quitting overall is being misinformed he's saying he's not going to go on tour as much because he wants to be next to the fam he wants to help his kid become a major league baseball player all this one on so let's play the clip one more time for those of you who've just joined let's play the clip one more time my everything comments tech or everything about, about support for you mm -hmm. so yeah you yeah. have so much love yeah tons tons so i appreciate you guys appreciate you guys um, yeah, I had to cancel Austin and Nashville. Uh, and usually I hate doing that stuff. Um, it happens. But uh, yeah, I, th I think this time I just don't care. That's where I'm at. I, I got I to gotta be home more. I'm going to pull back from touring so much. And I just got to be home, man. I got to. I can't miss Tigers games. Can't miss my boss D growing up. Uh, baby girl. Uh, just I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm freaking tired. You know, I've been hustling for over 12 years now. To be fair, think looking back to hearing it back again, him saying I just don't care is really stark, isn't it? Like, I just don't care. That's that's when you know your, your wits end. But it's also maybe indicative of like, because remember before I'd say on these streams, I was fascinated by how often he would lie about the most minute things and I maybe it's me and I'm maybe because I'm not a big liar I think I love to like 
keep stuff to myself or aggressively overshare which can be a form of like love bombing right like oversharing bombing i'm sure that's a thing i either don't say nothing or i say the most right i don't have a like i don't really lie that's not something i like to do i'll just either say everything or nothing but i think as a liar it must be very exhausting not to lie about the big things but the small things that don't make any sense like oh yeah this guy texts me oh rick ross and rick ross dm me about my fish tanks those type of lies must be exhausting to keep up when you're trying to fake it till you make it especially at his stage because i feel like there is a utility there is a usefulness to fake it till you make it because it maybe puts you in a position where you're trying to force yourself into the air you're trying to force yourself into a level that you want to get to you're trying to back yourself into a corner so you come out swinging you want to match your fucking chat you know but i think when you lie as much as he does about your career especially at his stage it must be exhausting because it's like how much more do i have to keep up this charade of me being a successful comic like how long will how, how, how long is it going to take until my career actually matches my chat and it seems like if anything it's gone in the reverse now you know the more he talks the the more his fucking career kind of goes down so maybe that's been the thing that's really kind of broken him like i just can't do these lies anymore i can't just be talking about oh yeah tickets nearly sold out nearly sold out only 20 left nearly sold out nearly sold out like, <laughs> how many nearly sold outs can you do how many times can you announce a gig at fucking covenia right how many times can you can you announce a covenia date and then cancel it how many times can you book a european tour and then cancel it two weeks before how many times it must be exhausting and this goes to prove unique's suspicion unique big up unique big up my guy unique he's 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 he um hypothesized that brendan actually wasn't getting booked at these comedy clubs he suggested that brendan was actually booking himself at comedy clubs which i i didn't know that was a, that was a thing but allegedly it's a thing because in the dj world you can't really do that in the dj world you can put on your own parties but you're almost limited to the clubs you can do them at. You, i can't just go to like fabric and want to put on my own rave right really and truly you kind of have to be a, a promoter show them you know work you've done before blah 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 but i guess in the comedy world if you want to perform at a comedy store you can actually book yourself you can actually just hire it as a venue sell tickets and then have your fans come and turn up but of course there's way more risk there the comedy store doesn't have the incentive to promote your tour or promote your show because it's your own show and you know you're taking all the risk <laughs> uh, because if no one turns up sometimes they won't even let you do the show that's what happens in DJ stuff. When you don't promote a show and it doesn't sell enough tickets, they'll be like, hey, we can't even justify turning on the lights because you're not gonna we're not gonna make the money back. So maybe that's been the actual blow. All those things he was booking that he had to cancel because he just couldn't sell enough tickets. And that's gotta be a real humbler. When you because the comedy clubs doesn't have many seats, right? There's not many tables and shit. So what? If you can't sell fifty tickets in your home state that's tough that's tough and again ticket sales is hard to do anybody out there that's done you know that's tried to fucking sell cookies door to door that's tried to put on a party anyone out there that's actually tried to invite their friends you know in the stream chat let me know this in the stream chat anybody that's tried to invite their friends for a birthday drinks that you're willing to pay for you're going to put money behind the bar for your friends to come to your birthday drinks you will know how hard it is to get your friends to come out and drink for free let alone pay let alone have strangers pay tickets to come and see you it's very hard to sell tickets it's very hard for people to turn up so i don't you know i don't laugh at him for that but i think that must have been one of the things that actually kind of hurt him the most pods but as far as the the plane life and stuff like that i gotta i gotta chill out i can do spots in la i can do local socal norcal but going international or you know going across the the freaking united states ain't happening right now so and i also wonder if a lot of this because he doesn't sound like a stand-up comedian anymore again very strange inside baseball i care too much about people's lives i don't know i sound fucking obsessive i understand please bear with me he doesn't sound like a stand-up comedian anymore he doesn't sound like rogan anymore i wonder 
if ever since Rogan left, he probably doesn't hang around with a lot of stand-up comedians anymore. So that rhetoric that they had about touring, sets and reps, doing loads of shows, always being on the road, grinding, he doesn't hear that talk anymore. So he's just a normal guy recording content. Going so that kind of justification for being away from your family while you're trying to impress your friends, your other stand-up com comedy peers and whatever, has gone. So it's just empty. It's just quiet. And you just sat there thinking, why am I traveling to fucking Spokane when I've sold 30 tickets when I could be with my kids? I could be hanging them out with my wife, where I could be driving my truck around. Like, what am I doing? I'm not even going to make any money. I'm going to get, I'm going to break even at this place. You know what I mean? If that, why am I doing this? So maybe that realization that maybe he doesn't have that community of comedians around him anymore to make it fun because that must be part of it too to go to these shows bump into a stand-up comedian um you know and whatever that's cool that's cool being a green room and shit not having that community probably that hurts bro i wonder if that's the reason why ever since rogan left he also took half of the comedians with him maybe a lot of them were brendan's friends but also that protection you know that influence it's gone now. He's just on his own. It's like, ugh. So I'm going to take a break from that and just focus on family and uh, do my thing, man. Do my thing. So, yeah, let's get into it. Enough of that. Enough of that. Again, nothing wrong with quitting. The way he's quitting is sad because it's obviously not really on his terms, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. In general, it's probably for the best he's focusing on podcasting because if you had to say what is one of Brendan's strengths, it's definitely podcasting. If you've watched the latest episodes of The Fire and the Kid and The Golden Hour without Brendan, say what you want about Brendan, but those shows are terrible without him. They're terrible without him. Without him, The Fire and the Kid is fucking garbage. Brian is lucky he has Brendan in his life. Without Br Brendan, Brian would be legitimately depending on his dad for money. Like, he'd be struggling out here, like, without Brendan. Like, that podcast without Brendan is fucking... It's horrible to listen to anyway, but without Brendan, the fire and the kid is unlistenable. The golden hour, even worse, right? Because Chris Alia is like, a sh like, and even Chris Alia, ADHD brain. So I'm jumping around here. Randomly, I start. I listen to a compilation of ten minute podcasts randomly. The difference in comedic chops of Chris Alia pre diddling accusations and now is wild, bro. He was so funny on 10 minute podcast <laughs> even brian can to a certain extent it's insane to see how that cancellation has completely devoid has completely ripped the humor out of chris Alia. he's a form a shell of his former self and eric griffin that fucking fat tub of lard is just happy to be there right because he was never part of the core group anyway no one liked eric griffin so he's just happy to be there so he's never really like i don't know i kind of get the feeling he's never really that was it comfortable but it kind of seems that they tolerate him, you know? He's never, he was never really one of the boys, Eric Griffin. He was always kind of like a side guy. Bobby Lee didn't really, you know, bring him in his circle. Like, I don't know, it's a strange thing. So that dynamic is, you know, a bit strange. But Brendan is definitely the best thing for those two podcasts. But he's definitely his strongest part of him, is podcasting. Um even though he's not that great at it, he's still, that's the best thing he can do. So it's probably for the best that he focuses on podcasting and content creation as opposed to being a stand-up comedian because as we've seen with You Be Surprised and Gringo Pappy, like the, the the really sad thing as well is that Gringo Pappy came how many years after You Be Surprised? Like three or four years or something? And most of us can say it's no better than You Be Surprised. So to go that long in between specials and for it to be marginally better than the first was probably the indication he needed that this is not for you because usually specials, even if they're not funny to you, you can see a, a, an improvement little by little. But to be in your second special and to not be any good, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. Um, what else are you guys saying here? 
but also imagine this show with a new person on local on it whether it's in town or on the road knows that it will be a minimum seen t5k subreddit maybe just contribute is yep true jack donaghy jr i disagree about the kink of the stink the golden hour sounds proper yeah enjoy enjoy would say that you would say that nj ranger you would but yeah I, I watched that episode i thought it was fucking garbage like honestly it went to fucking throw my head out the window um nobody wrangler equals no point to go on the road where's the tiger blood and whiskey oh that's another thing what happened, what's happened to tiger fig then because the whole plan of tiger fig was to promote it in comedy stores or to force comedy stores to sell it when you're performing there does it mean now that the stand-up comedy career is over, does it mean Tiger Fick is now defunct? Is Tiger Fick going to go insolvent? Will Tiger Fick go under? Who knows? Who knows? Um, Ao said it's messed up though that he will use his family instead of the fact that he's never been funny. Um, you know what, Ao? I don't think I'd even go that far. I'd, I'm even going to take that back. It's not that he's never been funny. He's just never resonated. Honestly, I've done this stream long enough and I've watched enough stand-up specials to know now that stand-up comedy is probably the most subjective art form in the entertainment industry. It's the most subjective discipline in that industry, whatever you want to call it. It really is. It's subjective. What you think is funny, I might not think is funny. I just think Brendan hadn't, just couldn't figure it out. That's, a, that's probably the saddest thing about it because there's people out there that Brennan is probably funnier than they just figured it out. Like, I don't know about you guys. This might sound like slander, but how much better at stand-up is Bert than Brendan? He might be a good storyteller, but actually jokes. Is Bert really that funny compared to Brendan? Really? They figured it out. He figured out something that works for him. He got fans that love it and he sells out and he goes on tour all the time Brendan just couldn't figure out his little niche you know he couldn't figure it out and that's probably his main thing I don't think it's a funny thing I don't think some some of the best standard comedians out there the top ones aren't funny you know like Rogan's a good example of it like I don't know I don't, I don't find him funny but he's the most successful standard comedian out there he sells out his tours he goes on when he, whenever he wants to go on tour he sells out a bunch like he's very comfortable in his situation so i don't think it's a funny thing it's just he didn't figure it out he couldn't figure it out ah uh, i never seem to have a proud of shitting yes he is but he's way better than Schaub. in your opinion i don't think he's way better you said the term way better is he better than Schaub? yes way better i disagree right joseph categorically i don't know i watched i remember watching secret time thinking hmm I remember Secret Time. Secret Time was a struggle to get through. Um, what is he saying? Exactly, but I figured out his niche sprint and couldn't, but I hate as most of his fans. Yeah, I wonder if that's part of it too, Case of Mosif. But I wonder if that's a part of it. Papa hates most of his fans. I wonder if, like, part of the reason why he never succeeded was that deep seated contempt he had for his fans. I wonder if that's the thing. <laughs> Whenever he sees fans, he'd like get bummed that they weren't like, they didn't look like Jocko Wilnick or they didn't look like David Goggins or they didn't look like Joe Rogan's. Like he, he'd always get bummed that there were these like fat, chubby, Hispanic type of dudes who are just happy to like, and I never understood why that's a bad thing. Like who cares that your all your fans look like that? Who gives a fuck, man? They're all your fans. They love you. Embrace them, hug them, support them, shout them out. Like even if... Even early on his Instagram, if you remember when he did those meet and greets, he'd only share pictures of guys who look kind of cool. He'd never share pictures of like, you know, the regular guys who'd come to meet him at his stand-up specials. He'd always share pictures of like the ripped guy with like the hottie girlfriend, but he'd never share pictures of the two, you know, the two chubby little Mexican kids. Like he wouldn't share those because he didn't think they were cool. It's like, bro, they're your fans. It doesn't matter what the fuck they look like. They love you. They support you. They're buying tickets. They're coming out to see you, like, who gives a fuck? But he'd always, honestly, if you if you know the law I'm talking about, you know, early on, Brendan would never share all the pictures people would tag him in on Instagram, only the ones with the, with the quote-unquote hotties. <laughs> he wanted all his fucking fans to look like Matt Rife or something. I don't know, man. Odd, odd guy. Odd fucking guy. Anyway, 
we've spoken about that long enough um like i said he hasn't quit stand-up comedy he's quit touring um most of the u.s and uh <laughs> most of the world which maybe is kind of like quitting stand-up but it's mostly he's quit like flying around and stuff he's gonna do local stuff when he needs to do and when obviously someone offers he will take it but all those cancelled shows all those flights out stays in hotels and shit because that's the thing it's all about brendan this is brendan he doesn't stay in shitty hotels he gets good airbnbs he takes decent flights he might take a he might hire a car all those things you know all those things so that's going to cost a lot so you know it probably takes a lot out of the money you're going to make if you're doing all that so you know godspeed to the guy godspeed to the guy